I want to talk today a little bit about the so-called less lethal weapons that we've been seeing. These are classified as less lethal weapons because they are in fact lethal. Uh, there have been tens of cases since the 1970s of people being killed by these weapons. We've seen weapons like this. This is a concussion grenade. This is designed to snap and go bang. Oh, God. Oh, heads up. Uh, to scare crowds and whatnot. When this goes off, pieces of sharp plastic fragments go scattering through the crowd. They have the possibility of both injuring and also taking out eyes or doing other uh, lacerations. If you want to look at this, this is a round that was fired. Uh, it contains pepper. It's designed to both maim and also incapacitate. Ooh. Uh, a subject. And these come out with rather high muzzle velocity, somewhere in the area of 300 feet per second. They impact with a person, they cut them, they mark them, and they also incapacitate them with pepper. These are fired from a grenade launcher. They go up into the air, they come down and release tear gas that's in an oil-based propellant. Uh, this is where we saw a lot of respiratory distress. My team treated a number of people in severe respiratory distress because of this. In addition, you have blunt trauma that can be caused by this when these impact on people's heads, shoulders, arms, hands. Because of these weapons flying around, we feel that it's imperative that the work of street medics not be, not be impaired by the police. We are, not here to, we are not here to enable the protest. We're here to make sure that everybody is safe. With these kinds of weapons flying around, everybody, whether they be bystanders, members of the press, media, legal observers, anybody could be hurt. And in this kind of a situation, we feel it's very imperative that trained, skilled professionals are on hand right on scene to treat people as soon as possible and to contact EMS and interface with EMS uh, if that's necessary. In my experience uh, in being incarcerated here in this facility behind me, this is the worst and most inefficient uh, incarceration experience that I've ever had. Um, the uh, jailers were totally inept. The police were unprofessional. And in general, people were treated very badly. We had people with misdemeanors locked up for 23 hours a day in their cells. We had people who had been released on their own recognizance, local people, uh, injured people who were trying to get out of jail, held for five hours after being released on their own recognizance because of the either sheer incompetence or deliberate delay on the part of the jailers and the police officials here. And I think the actions of the police in many cases exacerbated the situation. It's possible, it's definitely possible to corral or detain the very, very few number of individuals that are causing trouble without these kind of heavy-handed, broad sweeps that uh, entrap hundreds and hundreds of people simply exercising their First Amendment rights and exposing hundreds and hundreds of people to less lethal weapons and chemical irritants.